Timothy 4, 1. Now the spirit expressly says that in later in latter uh, times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. Then 2 Peter 2, 1, put that down. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. The word privily in the original Greek, it doesn't only describe the method by which false doctrines is, you could say sm smuggled, how it's smuggled into the church, but it also describes its deceptive purposes. Now, this is where I'm gonna go kind of slow so you can write all this down. This Greek word here is parasago. Parasago is pronounced P-A-R-E-I-S-A-G-O. I just gave it to you. Let's break it down. The word para, P-A-R-E or P-E-R-E, sago, is a three-fold word that begins with the preposition para. P A R A or P E R E, which means alongside. Para dash alongside. It means, if you look it up, it's uh, to one side of or beside or side by side. And this describes that smuggling operation. It's side by side, para. False teaching runs right alongside true doctrine. This creates a deception that's more difficult to detect because it is so close to sound doctrine. A good example is a $100 bill. Um, look at, have you ever been and you've given a uh, $100 bill and they have went and they've looked at it. Sometimes they'll take a, um, you know, the, the detector pin or so, and they'll check it out. But they say the best way actually is by eyesight uh, to see certain things on that original $100 bill. Uh, they will, it, it's, it, uh, this is a good uh, comparison of, of the genuine $100 bill to a counterfeit one. The designer of the counterfeit bill uh, does, he, he, they make the, the counterfeit bill just as close alongside of the original, but it takes a experienced person by eyesight to look at certain things upon that $100 bill. I was looking at it the other day. And if you hold it up to the light, you'll see certain things that you did not see, just uh, not in the light. You'll see on the right side, you'll see um, uh, the, the, the face, okay, on there as it's here, but you'll see it in the corner. You'll see the Liberty Bell kind of stand out on the other side. You'll see when you hold it up, the orange turns to green in certain areas. You'll see certain things. Uh, if you hold it at an angle, you'll see Franklin on the right side, but you'll see a watermark there. And so it just, if you look at it, just, just get a hundred dollar bill and just hold it up to the light and just see all the fine too. That's what they say the eye test is sometimes better than the pen test. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they say. But there are ways that you can tell a counterfeit $100 bill. And uh, that counterfeit $100 bill have to come alongside para, para, P-E-R-E, para, P-A-R, -E, have to come alongside that original to appear to be a true hundred dollar bill. We see the same thing. The people have to be trained to work with money. Uh, they, they, they know the difference between it because they're trained. We look at designer clothing. Just to look at it, it looks the same. It takes a keen eye 
of the one who is familiar with the real to tell the difference. Spiritually speaking, we can apply these same truths when it comes to exposing false doctrines or teachings that are being propagated to, into the body of Christ today, we have to allow the Lord, saints, to minister to us and to train us uh, according to his holy word and by the power of his spirit. We have to be careful that we don't allow another Jesus or another gospel to lead us into error. We need the right covering. We need the right teaching. We need to check out stuff to make sure, get the whole picture before, in other words, we run with it. The next part of this word is a Greek word, E-I-S, parasago. E-I-S, parasago, which means into. The strong concordance, page uh, 1519, says enter our purpose, entrance. In other words, you are seeing an entrance here. Usually men or women from within the ranks of Christianity, they'll run these false teachings alongside para, alongside true doctrine, for the purpose of getting into E-S, E-I-S, the church. And then the final part of the word is a Greek word, ago, A-G-O. And this word means to lead, to lead. So the end result of false doctrine is individuals being led astray. The word again, parasago, P-E-R-E, reveals that false doctrine runs right alongside para, true doctrine to get into EIS, the body of Christ, and to aga, A-G-O, lead individuals astray. Para saga. Did you get that? Because I want you to understand this. The sad fact of the matter is that many times the deception or the false teachings are brought into the body of Christ by respected leaders and laymen and those from within. So because of that, we have to learn to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Eat the meat, but don't eat the bones, okay? That's an old saying. Or we will find ourselves choking on that which we should never have consumed in the first place. And we must get the whole truth. I cannot say that enough. Not partial. Listen to the whole of things. When someone passes down what they think they have heard, it gets more and more away from the original. Go to the source. Many times when I've heard many things come out about person this, if they say don't do this, or they say this, they say that. If I listen to all that, if I go back to it, put the video on, listen to the whole thing they're saying, I'll find out that that wasn't true. That's not what really was said. So let's be careful that we don't carry because of itching ears carry and too lazy to go and to check out stuff that we are passing along things that would bring harm to a person's life. Hebrews 13, nine said, be not carried, carried away with divers and strange doctrines. Don't be carried away and don't you carry it uh, away. So, uh, you know, uh, I love fish. And sometimes you can get fish that has a lot of bones. And um, I don't throw the fish away because it has bones. But I eat the fish and be careful to take out the bones, <laughs> okay? Because the fish itself is good. So the church must not be quick, in other words, to embrace every teaching that comes from the pulpit either. You have to be wise. We must learn to sift the teaching that had been given to us through the filter 
of the scriptures through the holy word that God has given us. The word of God will expose, believe me, that which is error and that which is true. And we must pay attention to what God's word is saying. So if what we are hearing is not lining up again with the word of God, saints, we would save ourselves from deception and heartache if we would just learn how to spit out the bones. And if you are not sure about a thing, if you're under a covering, then check it out with your covering. That's why you have a covering. You know, pastors, they watch out for your soul so you don't get off and stuff. There's a lot of hyped up stuff going on today. It's just hype. And just watch it. Go back in history. It goes for a season and all of a sudden you don't hear it anymore. So, so we want the truth, nothing but the truth. So help us God. You know, Matthew 22, 20, uh, 29, Jesus answered the Sadducees and said to them, you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And I believe this is one of the major problems of the body of Christ today. We do not know the scriptures, nor do we know the power of God. We don't read, we don't study, and we need to. We've settled for less than God's manifest presence in our midst. And we've neglected spending time at the master's feet in prayer and just worship and adoration of who he really is. And so because of this, we accept the teachings of man instead of the teachings the, uh, of, of, the, of the Lord, you know, the power of God, because we know him in a way, we should know him in a way that we can receive we have embraced everything that has been dished out to us, but we have not yet learned how to embrace the cross and the one Christ who died upon that cross. I believe today the body of Christ needs to get back to the basics. Just get back to the basics because there's no set formula at all for salvation, deliverance, healing, miracles. We see this in the scripture. We must be careful that we do not limit the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Don't limit him. The church does not need psychology to cast out devils. You will never cast out devils and heal the sick through psychology. <laughs> never open up no blinded eyes and bring sinners to Christ, you know. We're today we're, we're in a lot of therapy, therapy, that's the word. The council has gone to therapy. And I look at that, I say, well, th now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying anything wrong with therapy, okay? I'm, I'm not saying anything wrong with therapy, but I'm seeing something here in, in things that can happen by the counseling is less and the therapy is rising. Who is the counselor? The Holy Spirit is the counselor. All, and I'm not saying therapy is wrong, but I'm just showing you something it, to those that have a spiritual mind can flow with me that as counseling, because people call themselves counselors, but it's really the Holy Spirit already said, I am the counselor. And so when he is pushed down and then the therapy comes that opens up but never brings healing because the counselor the holy spirit sometimes is omitted is omitted there are a lot of natural things psychological things that is necessary yes it is and it's needed but never substitute that with the holy spirit because he was there from the beginning and he can go into the deep consciousness of the very soul, the very emotions where pain lies. And he can uproot that, and psychology can too. But what happens when it's uprooted? The healer has to come in, rather than it's just, there it is. And then people are stuck with that. And you see people going off, killing themselves, and all kinds of things happening because the healing power of God has not been demonstrated there. 
hasn't been released. So again, for those of you that are writing, uh, I'm closing, but Greek word, parasago, P-A-R-E-I-S-A-G-O, okay? Reveals that false doctrine runs right alongside, which is the para part, alongside true doctrine to get into is the EIS part, into the body of Christ to lead AGO individuals astray, which is parasado. I want to make sure you got this. Don't have itching ears. Don't be quick to want to run and dissect things and run before you have the whole of a thing. Then when you get the whole of the thing, ask God, is it necessary <laughs> for you to tell it? <laughs> is it? Is it necessary for you to have to tell this? Uh, check that out, that's wisdom. Because sometimes the fact that we tell something will many times delete or exempt something that we're telling. There is a lot of times that um, showers and, and all and little parties, we'll have a lot of um, uh, people sitting on the chairs and they'll start from the beginning and someone will whisper and tell somebody a sentence. And then it goes on and on and on and they'll keep telling it. And when they get to the end, the person that tells the sentence is totally not like what was originally told. Okay, so be slow to speak. And when you see something that you think is an error, pray for the person. Pray for that person. Don't criticize and bring down because that person is still your sister or your brother. 